Hi everybody. So I'm gonna be a little serious here. Um, I just watched a video about the 30th anniversary on February 28th, 1994, is when the Don't Ask, Don't Tell um, law went into effect per Congress and uh, President Bill Clinton. So I don't, I'm gonna be open and candid and you may not like what you have to hear. Um, but with the election that's coming up, I'm fearful. I'm fearful because I don't want that shit again. Not for me, not for anybody. Nobody deserves to go through that. And um, these MAGA people are really being atrocious. And if you're not listening to what they're saying, they mean it. So whether Donald Trump means it or not, or he could care less, I don't know but he's gonna give them the keys to the castle. And let me tell you a little bit about what I went through. Um, I, the first time I even knew what gay was, or even, I remember my lieutenant, Captain Lieutenant, I don't remember his title, he was a cadet, and my major, who threw me against the clock, uh, threw me against the lockers downstairs in the ROTC uh, building. I mean, they threw me hard. They told me faggots don't belong here. Um, they scared the hell out of me. I didn't even know what a faggot, I didn't know what gay was. I didn't know anything. I was 19 years old. I grew up in the Midwest. We didn't talk about that stuff. Um, I, we didn't have internet like we do today, so looking it up wasn't exactly something I knew how to do, and I was afraid to because I didn't know if I wanted to know. Um, and the don't ask, don't tell policy really allowed for a lot of hate to uh, fester um, and really allowed it to all be, be clo behind closed doors. I mean, I got kicked. I got punched. I got pushed. I'll never forget when a captain at West Point tried shoving his foot in my face and knocking me off as I'm holding onto the rope for dear life as I'm repelling. I'll never forget that one. I couldn't hear him, um, but I certainly know he used the F word. <laughs> um, I could see it. I was, I was scared. I thought I was going to tumble. Luckily, I had enough strength to grasp around my elbow and hold onto the, uh, the rope. And um, somehow I didn't go tumbling all the way to the ground. And that's the shit that happened. Um, I remember going into my office, my uh, my other captain's office in Oklahoma. And I, I sat down, I was there for academic reasons. I was the academic uh, battalion officer. And um, one of our uh, one of our lieutenants was going to fail out of couldn't do math and we were field artillery so it was kind of important um, and I'm trying to figure out how we're going to handle this and the captain looks at me and goes so when do I get to fire you because you're a faggot I can't say I can't respond I couldn't do anything I literally got to take abuse from just strangers not that he wasn't a stranger but he was somebody I didn't really know or care about. Um, it was very apparent. I mean, I was treated like shit all the time. I got, I'd be in a classroom and like people would just like, I mean, it was bully central. And I hadn't ever really been bullied like that in high school or anything like that. So it was just like, what the hell? Um, I went to a meeting where I was presenting and the Colonel uh, literally yells at me, says, shut up and sit down. I can't listen to a gay man talk. I mean, these things happen daily um and a lot of my friends didn't understand why i left the military but i didn't think i was gonna make it out alive i mean not going to war and dealing with that issue i didn't think i was gonna make it to a situation where that would happen because every day i was being asked every day i was being touched in inappropriate ways i every day i was being assaulted and it just happened all the time 
And that was my experience with Don't Ask, Don't Tell. When I finally told, because I had met my partner um, and I thought, you know, I didn't want my entire life to be surrounded by the military that hated me. <laughs> and I had realized I had come to terms with my sexuality, that it was time for me to be honest about it. I could have, <laughs> I could have committed murder and I would have been in the military longer than when, uh, when that happened. And they had to have armed guards take me out. They were afraid that I was going to get murdered because of all the other guess, things that had happened to other people in the past. That is don't ask, don't tell. I don't think that this MAGA group cares about things like don't ask, don't tell. I think they're ready to go way back behind that. And I'm afraid. I am really afraid to where our country is heading if Trump gets elected. So remember that when you're going to the ballot box, because I don't think we'll ever go back if he does get elected. I don't think we'll be able to survive this as a country. I think we'll be something different. So um, you may not like some of the things you hear about Biden, but he's a good man. He cares about people. I don't feel that way with MAGA people. So that's my two cents. I, I wish I had a better answer, but that's the world we're in right now. And I don't want people to grow up and deal with the shit that I dealt with. Nobody deserves that. Nobody.